I already took some pictures of it because I love this up here. Did you draw that or did you student? No, I drew that. But is that how we shall start then? Yeah, you said you want to talk about the room? Go okay, ahead. Yeah, so uh, welcome to my classroom. I'm Jason Stevenson. I teach here at Deer Creek High School and I've got pre-AP English 2 this year, creative writing 1 and 2, and then I'm a co-sponsor for student council. And I'm excited uh, this year to have a new classroom. Uh, it's new to me. It's been lived in previously by a math teacher, but I have two marker boards. And this marker board um, right here, um, next to the smart board, I've currently got a two kill Mockingbird unit going on. And I used to want to be a cartoonist in about seventh or eighth grade. I really like Calvin and Hobbes and do some doodling. So I channel that now um, with some little pictures of some of the characters to help my students. Um, so that's what that is right there. My two class rules I have posted are work hard and be nice. This part of the bulletin board, I've got um, a running amount of how many books my two different hours of English have read so far this year. Just got a new student in the second hour, but second hour has already read over 115 books, and sixth hour has a few more students. They've already read um, over 130 books as a class. This is where students can sign up for their Wednesday book talk for the entire class. So the expectation is um, a student shares a book with the class at some point this semester. And we do that on Wednesdays because I do book talks for the class on, Mon on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I show a book trailer on Mondays and then Fridays students update their um, checkup chart for what their progress is for their reading. This is my favorite poster in the room. That's the Sum Hurry poster. So every two lines is a different chapter in the Harry Potter book series. The lady who made this, her name is Lucy Nicely. And you can get the posters as a chapter at a time, or a book at a time. Or you can get it like I did, where it's all the books in one. And students discover this throughout the year. Sometimes they'll see it right away. Sometimes it'll be March and they'll say, hey, what is this? Oh, that's so cool. And I'll tell them, that's been there since August. Um, let's see, I've got a classroom library of about 500 books or so, and I've amassed these over the course of nine years of teaching. I started building my class library my very first year when I taught middle school. And I might have a few of those books in here still, but they kind of get lost or I rotate things out over time. Do you want me to ask questions or do you want to Or do I just read and then you edit or all of that jazz? It's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to edit regardless, but it's cool. I taught middle school, seventh and eighth grade uh, literature, regular and pre AP for two years before that. So now I'm in my ninth year total of teaching. Um, sure. So, one word that best describes how I teach or how I strive to teach is um, can I say student centered? It's hyphenated. And um, Looking around the room, you see that I've got my students uh, grouped in desks, and it's not always that way. Sometimes I'll do rows if I'm giving a quiz, or um, we've done a giant circle before um, where everyone can see one another's faces a little bit better. But I like to see um, what the students can bring to the table. I don't really like being the, the lecturer, and I can do a little bit of teaching that way, but I'd much, much rather kind of put the students um, out there so that they are doing a lot more of the learning and taking ownership and the discussion instead of hearing me saying all my opinions about To Kill a Mockingbird. I want them to be able to um, lead out on that discussion and kind of get into some heated debates and then I can step in when I need to and maybe point out anything that you know they didn't notice. The temptation my first year of teaching was really to try to control a lot more. And I'll admit I, I can still be a control freak sometimes, but I do try to um, get my students to um, take the lead of their learning and create opportunities for that to happen. I try to share um, the learning process with them. So if I'm assigning an essay for my students to write, I write the essay first as an example for them to see, which might seem a little simple. It also might seem a little scary uh, to some teachers. They might say, hey, I'm the teacher. I just need to grade it. I don't want to have to write it. But I think that really helps with um, establishing trust and establishing respect um, from students if they see that I as a teacher can do the writing that I'm asking them to do and I've got the got the skills um, and I got that idea from Penny Kittle's book right beside them that was about my 
second year of teaching high school English. I came from uh, middle school where I only taught reading. And then when I came to high school, and suddenly now I've got to do both, which I, I wanted that. That was the main reason I came to the high school, because I wanted to be able to teach reading and writing together. It felt awkward almost to be teaching only one of those strands. I wanted that challenge, and I wanted that um, opportunity for more creativity, getting to teach both reading and writing together. Um, but what I found my first year of teaching at the high school is, man, I would just mark up the papers and grade and give all the feedback, and I'd give it back to students, and some of them would end up in the trash, and there wasn't a whole lot of buy-in, and so I, I was looking for help. And Penny Kittle's book, um, right beside them, really helped me um, in my uh, journey in becoming a better writing teacher. And the main premise of her book was, you as a teacher, you've got to be doing the writing that you're requiring um, of your students. To kick it up a notch, Kelly Gallagher, um, in one of his uh, books, Write Like This, he turns it into draft in front of your students. Let them see your messy writing process that it doesn't come out perfect on the page because maybe some students have the impression that, oh, you're the teacher, it's all great for you from the start. Um, that's definitely not the case for me or Kelly Gallagher. That's a lot scarier to do and harder to do. Kind of in a reading rut right now, but I am a pretty big reader and I'm able to talk books with my students and so I'm requiring them to read 10 books of choice uh, each semester, 20 books total, um, plus um, three required pieces of literature each semester. So that's 26. Might seem like a whole lot um, for high school, but I've got some students who are on the ball and they're doing a great job with it. I've got some who are not really doing a whole lot of reading and I don't know what I can do to motivate them. I'm going to keep trying my, my reading thing. I get a lot of ideas for that from a Twitter chat. I do that at the end of each month on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. Central Time. There's a Twitter chat um, that's grouped under the hashtag Title Talk. And Title Talk um, brings teachers together, elementary, middle, middle grade, secondary, high school, the whole gamut, and we all share our ideas about books that can engage students and strategies to get students to become better readers. Um, so an app that I use this year, I'll actually get it real fast. I'm a new iPhone person and there's something called Classroom Organizer. I can check out all 500 of my books in my classroom library to my students through this app. In the past, I would have to use paper, but what the app is, allows me to do, I just have to click the student name, I scroll through find the person who wants to check out the book and then I can find the title one of two ways I can type in a portion of the title maybe like just one word um, one book in the or one book in there is the art of racing in the rain so if I just type the word rain in here it pulls up the title and I can hit done and then I can check that book out to this student bam and now it's checked out. I get a weekly email of who has my books and for how long, if they're overdue. And then whenever a student wants to return the book, I just hit the return button. I scroll through and find the student's name. It'll show you all the books they have checked out. There's the Art of Racing in the Rain. I hit done. Yes, I want to return it and it's been returned. Another thing cool about the app is um, if I need to add more titles to the library, I can do that manually by typing but um, if you press the add titles button on the app and hit scan, all you need is an ISBN of the book. You scan the ISBN, eight, nine times out of 10, it will recognize it with the title and you just add it. A time saving trick for grading papers, and I learned this from the Oklahoma Writing Project. I'm a teacher consultant for Oklahoma Writing Project. I've been a, a writing, coach for their summer institute as well, returned doing that, and then one year I was the co-director of the summer institute, kind of helped oversee the whole thing. Um, but I learned this there, don't correct all the grammar mistakes, instead do the dot te technique, where you put a big dot at the end of the line where there was an egregious grammatical error, and then students go back into the line and find the big grammar mistake themselves, because you as a teacher, you already know how to be an editor, you're already good at that, 
So don't spend your time showing off that skill. Let your students practice that skill themselves. It becomes like a little hunt, and then they can correct it or find it, and then maybe learn from it a little bit better instead of you just marking all those comma spices or other things that they need to work on. Well, I'm, I'm probably I'm probably a little more of an introvert than an extrovert, which might seem surprising. You're giving me a surprise look. <laughs> yeah. But in a, in a giant room full of people, I'm not going to be the life of the party, and I'm not going to be really like loud. I'm going to gravitate toward just like one or two people and be kind of quiet, and we'll do our own little thing. Um, and even in a smaller group, like a group of four or five, I listen a whole lot more than I talk. But whenever I like get on a, on like the quote stage to to teach or to like present at a conference, I can like I can turn it on and I can do the whole song and dance. But I don't know. It's 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 like I'm teacher teacher man in that moment. And then when I'm when I'm just chasing and not in that role as a teacher, I kind of hang back a little bit more. That's that's what I've kind of noticed about myself. But I could I could be reading this wrong. Like when I've done those personality tests before, um, like for the color one, I'm definitely blue. Like I'm social and I do want to talk and um, that comes out in how I teach. Like I want to engage with my students, um, not only on an academic level, but on a personal level. Like I want to know what their hobbies are. I want to know how the else they're involved in school and let them know that I care. Um, and I think you can do that and still be a little bit of an, of an introvert. But I don't know. When I've taken the like the E J P L, what it, when the other personality test, when there's like four things and it's like you're judgmental or you're sensing and you're introvert or extrovert, I've taken that before and I'll get I'll get introvert on it. Um, even though I think part of me wants to be an extrovert and wants people to think of me as. I just don't know. Um, but the way that I teach um, with letting it be more student-centered means I do have to kind of hang back more and let the students uh, maybe lead things a little bit more than um, what's natural, I guess. And classroom management was tough for me in the first two years, especially teaching middle school, pretty squirrely. Um, a famous story from those two years is I had a student who was emotionally disturbed and we just battled a lot throughout the year. He would just give me all sorts of problems and trouble. And one day he like got up from his desk and started running and screaming around the room. And if that happened now, I I think I'd just stare at him and say, "Get out!" Or you know, just say, "Stop!" Like, what are you doing? Like, but as a first year teacher, I chased him up and down <laughs> the rows and was like, "Sit down!" And he was like, "No!" And just was. Oh, and everyone's laughing, all the students are laughing, and I just think of that now, and I'm like, okay, I've definitely grown in my classroom management, and, I mean, silence is really good sometimes, so instead of just saying, quiet, 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 everyone quiet, I just say, everyone quiet, and then I can just wait until it dies down, and I, I teach pre-AP, so I've got some shushers sometimes, and for the most part, they're all here to learn anyway, so it's not, not too bad, but even in creative writing, too, I can grab their attention pretty quickly when I need to. And you can do that and still be, I think, a little bit of an introvert. Because just you turn on your teacher voice, your teacher stance or whatever. I don't know. Now I feel like I need to retake my a personality test and determine am I really, you know, introvert or extrovert. Well, I, I saw this question and I thought, I don't know if I, I have a, a great answer for this, but um, one of my professors in college, Dr. Mark Hemrick, taught me um, natural sciences, um, or a natural science class at Oklahoma Baptist University. And he told me at graduation, um, in the flurry of all the things afterwards, after graduation, he's like, Jason, you've, you've got to be friends with your students. You've got to be friends with your students. And that just struck a chord with me. And I think some people would say, oh, no, 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 that is bad. Don't do that. Don't friend students on any social media, and on and on and on. And I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm friends with my students. I didn't take his advice in that way, but I think what he meant, and I think what's worked well for me, is that I'm friendly, right? I'm approachable, and I do follow students on Twitter, and they follow back, and we're able to continue to dialogue sometimes about what we've learned in class, or we can just 
build up that rapport and that trust through that. And actually, one of our school board members recently contacted me and complimented me on how I'm doing that. And he even made the suggestion that we try to bring Twitter into our school a little bit more with um, a hashtag. He had suggested something else, but I had actually already thought of that and had put out a little PowerPoint to put on the TVs around the school about using the hashtag DC Antlers for Deer Creek Antlers. That's our mascot, just part of the deer. Not the whole deer. Um, and so I re-emailed that PowerPoint and it's up on the TVs now. I'm sure we'll have some students abuse it and put silly things or maybe inappropriate things with that hashtag, but I'm hoping some students will use that um, for learning purposes or to show off something cool that they learned in class or something. And then we're going to um, put a rotating uh, amount of tweets that use that hashtag on our TVs around the school to kind of build up more of our community of learners here at, at our school. So, yeah, definitely try to be friendly and be nice and be kind to students. I don't see why someone would go into teaching who doesn't like kids and is rude or cruel or, I don't know. No, and I can still be firm. I can be strict when I need to, but, um, yeah, friendly, being friendly. That's some good advice. So, I'd love to meet Penny Kittle. I've already mentioned her. Mm-hmm. Penny Kittle for coffee, and talk about uh, talk about writing and, and reading with her. I mean, I'm a I'll embrace it. I'll say I'm a nerd. I, I embrace that fully. I like to learn, and I think she's um, a current rock star in the world of teaching. And I'm actually going to try to make that happen, sort of by using a fund for teachers grant, which I need to probably work on over fall break. And I'm going to apply to attend the Booth Bay Literacy. Um, little conference thing. It's at the end of June each year. It's up in Maine at Booth Bay. So I get to fly up to Maine and collaborate with all these rock star language arts teachers um, and then teachers like me who, you know, we're all doing our own good things and just all want to come together and learn. So hopefully I can attend Booth Bay in June. That is my current goal. My definition, my definition of creativity is, I'm going to say, hard work. Okay, that might seem a little, what? Um, but I, I teach creative writing, and I think sometimes the students come in and think, man, you know, this is going to be really fun today, and it can be fun, but then other times they're like, whoa, I've, I'm realizing I've got to really craft this, or I've got to work hard at coming up with something uh, creative. Um, and I, I'd also say, to fill in that blank, my definition of creativity is it's in danger right now. I'd say that sometimes creativity gets pushed out of our lesson plan ideas or gets pushed out of curriculum like there's no time for writing poetry or there's no time for um, maybe doing an assessment that involves drawing something or whatever. And I think there's room for creativity and I think that taps into knowledge that can be so appreciated and can be just as maybe relevant as a textbook answer to what is the definition of this vocabulary word. And I try to make space um, in my classes, in my pre-AP English class, for some creativity. The rigor's still there, um, but I think I need to throw some creative things at my students, with pre-AP students especially, when they are told, okay, we're gonna write a where I'm from poem. Here's the model text by George Arlo Lyon. Here's my version that I did. Now you're gonna write one. And that can just throw them for a loop sometimes. They're like, oh my gosh, I have to be creative. Oh, this is a challenge for me, right? Instead of just the read these chapters. Let's see. I would like to see, I'd like to see Donalyn Miller answer these questions. Donalyn Miller wrote the book The Book Whisperer, and I got to hear her speak at a National Writing Project annual meeting down in Orlando, Florida, a couple years back, and that's where I bought her book, The Book Whisperer. She has a new book coming out, I think this month or next month, it's called Reading in the Wild, and that's more about how real world readers, how they do their own thing, and what makes them uh, successful as readers. But she's the founder of that title talk, Twitter chat that I was referencing earlier, um, and she's a um, like she's the book maven. She's she's pretty cool. She's the book whisperer. That's the title of her book. But I got a lot of my ideas for how I do um, my book of choice 
reading program. I got a lot of it from her. <laughs> so I think that hits everything. Okay. You plug awesome. your blog or just say bye. <laughs> oh, okay. So if you want to check out my blog, um, my blog is at DC for Deer Creek. DC Jason, J A S O N, um, dot wordpress.com. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is teacherman82. And if you go there, the link in my bio takes you to a page where you can connect with me in all sorts of ways, not only um, on my blog, but then also on Goodreads. I love the Goodreads website for keeping track of books, if you haven't heard of that. I've got a little YouTube channel that I'm experimenting with. I collect videos. I've published a few uh, myself. And there's a few more things on that website as well. So thanks so much for um, learning with me today and checking out how I teach. And I look forward to hearing from more of the Oklahoma teachers out there. I think this will be a good experiment to try. Bye. What's the, uh, I don't know, what's the antlers like sign? Do they just like... I know, when I came this? to the school, I was like, is it like this or what? And no one does anything like that. Oh, okay. And I wonder too, like, okay, if the high school mascot is the antlers, is the middle school like nubs or what? <laughs> and they just, everyone's the antlers in our school.